Thank you. World problems. So world problems are so large that you and I, as ordinary people, sometimes we feel intimidated. We feel like we don't have a place to start in order to make a difference. Poverty, diseases, famine, war, those are the uh, uh, few of the things that are affecting the world today that are, are personally, I was lucky enough to be affected by all of them um, because they made me the person I am today. But I was also unlucky to be affected by them because I can tell you firsthand, it stinks down here. But in the next few minutes, I want to take you through a little journey uh, of my life as one of uh, uh, examples how ordinary people can make a difference in this world. This is my grandmother. She's the most amazing person you can possibly ever meet. She's deaf mute. She doesn't talk nor hear, but she was able to raise me from childhood, from nine months old until I was an adult. And as if that was not uh, enough of a problem for her, she had five children, and all of them died of HIV AIDS, including my father and my mother thereafter. That left me an orphan, seven years old. And instead of enjoying uh, life as a seven-year-old, I was uh, uh, given a responsibility to take care of my younger siblings, five of them. Ten years passed, and whatever happened within those, within those ten years is a whole book of its own. But I can tell you, after those ten years, a miracle happened. This woman, her name is Kara Adams, she moved from the U.S. to Uganda to start a program to save lives. Because of some medical reasons, she could not have children of her own, so she decided to go over there and help kids orphaned by AIDS and other uh, vulnerable diseases. Um, Carol helped me, sent me through school, and finally connected me to this family. I, I joke with my friends, I tell them I'm one of the most lucky people in this world to be part of this family. They are great. They brought me into this country. They have helped me out from everything from scratch. And my mom, God bless her heart, she has taught me everything. You know, this is the computer, this is the microwave, this is this, this is that. I had never seen these things, okay? And in case you're wondering, where is Uganda? That's where Uganda is, and that's how I moved. <laughs> um, but being on a plane for the first time, that was, I have never seen a plane, I've never touched one, and I've never been in one. But going to the airport, I remember I took the roads, the dirt roads, and it was all brown. Um, I sat down, and they gave me this little towel. And I had never, you know, I didn't know even what to do with the towel. So I decided to wipe my face, as others were doing, and it all turned brown. I was so embarrassed that I decided, well, I might as well keep it. I still have it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but life went on, and they sent me through school, and they finally graduated from UC Berkeley with a, a, a mechanical engineering degree. And I was also given the opportunity to be the student speaker at, uh, upon graduation. So coming to the US, it opened a lot of opportunities, and life became so different. And I, had to, I saw these things I'd never seen before, and including becoming a pilot. I was like, well. I've never seen a plane, I've never been on one, but now I am, well, why not learn how to fly it? <laughs> well, <laughs> I became a pilot, so I can fly planes and helicopters. Um, and going forward, I was also given the opportunity, well, I, I applied and I got into UC Berkeley to do a PhD uh, in mechanical engineering. So that's where I'm at right now, uh, doing a doctoral program. So, with all this, well away, um, my mind is never away from home, and my mind is never away from all these problems and things that have happened in my life and what's happening around the people that I grew up with. So I decided I needed to do something to help out the people from my own community. So, um, but this is the challenge. The challenge I'm going up against is a multi-dimensional problem. Uganda has, is the size of Oregon, has about 34 million people. That's like 10 times more the people that live in Oregon. 50% are all children under 15 years old, and there's a lot of orphans. Uh, and life expectancy is 41 years old, and that included my father who died at 30 years old. 
So I'm like, what should I do to uh, help out my people? So I started a program, a nonprofit organization that uh, build mobility uh, solutions. What we do, we build uh, bicycles, wheelchairs, and all uh, three wheelers or two wheelers that solve problems. And I truly believe that no one understands the needs of a local community than the local person. Let it be here in Sacramento, let it be here in San Francisco, whatever. The local person knows it better. We train local people, we use local labor, we use local resources, and this is a pile of metal that we find in scrap metal, bring it in and make products that save lives. These are the products that we make out of them, and we distribute them to the local people that need them the most. Um, we create local employment, and we create local entrepreneurs by giving them products. They start local mobile businesses, um, and also the others start social initiatives. This is Rosa. She's 14 years old. She has other three kids that are younger than she is, and she's taking care of them. She's deaf mute. She's HIV positive, and she's an orphan. So we give her a product to get, get her from where she's from to school every day. I personally used to walk seven miles to school every day just to go get that education, and it was feeling for her. So I gave her a product that can help her get to school. This is another uh, recipient of our program. She got a, a wheelchair. She used to use cardboard to scroll around to go from home to school every day and we actually uh, personalized it for her, and she wanted it to be that color. We made it pink. <laughs> um, this is one of the products that I would like to send, spend a little, a few seconds on. It's a bicycle ambulance, a simple solution. It takes people from their rural villages to whatever hospital there is. And 10 ambulances out there, a um, 1,000 people served every month. Just one ambulance served anywhere between 75 to 100 people in one month. So people ask me, how do you do what you do? How can you be in a successful PhD program? How can you run a successful nonprofit and keep doing what you're doing? To be honest, I don't know. But what I can tell you is <laughs> <laughs> behind closed doors is really tough. It's a lot of hard work. It's a lot of determination. And I can tell you that um, if we invest in the local people, one person at a time, we can see change in this world and make a difference. And the results are exponential. Thank you.